All right, a very good morning to East Africa. I hope that you've had a better start to the day and to the week. Thank you very much for choosing us. This is your world and my name is Winnie Lubembe. Now sadness, feeling down or having loss of interest or pleasure in daily activities are familiar feelings for all of us. However, according to the World Health Organization, Depression is a leading cause of disability worldwide with an estimated 264 million people affected by depression globally. So Kenya was ranked fourth in Africa, having an estimated 1.9 million people with the condition. So what this means is that Kenyans are amongst the most depressed Africans. So the question is, what exactly causes depression? How does it look like? And when exactly do you seek help? Well, we unpack all that and of course, for our guests of the day who will be helping us with the discussion, we have Isaac Mawil, who's a counseling psychologist. Thank you very much, Isaac, for making time for us this morning. It's good to see thank you after you. some time. Thank you. You've thank been you. well? Yeah, I'm doing well. All right. And of course, we also have Sarah Muni, who's a life coach and a counselor as well at Lead Pro Africa Consultant. Thank you very much, Sarah, for thank coming you. by today. Thank and it's you. also good to see you. You know, do we say Happy New Year, Happy Birthday, Happy <laughs> Anniversary? Happy New Month, everything. Happy everything. Yeah, happy Valentine's. <laughs> right? <laughs> happy everything. <laughs> Everything. And then we also have Jefferson Otieno, who's a mental health advocate. Thank you very much, Jefferson, for coming by today. And it's good to meet you um, as well. And we also have Tugi Wayaki, who's a mental health advocate as well. Thank you very much, Tugi, for coming by. And it's good to meet you. And let's just start with the basics. Um, and I'll start with you, Isaac, because you see, depression is one of the things that we talk about every single day. We hear the term depression almost on a daily. Yes. But then again, understanding the scope of depression sometimes mm -hmm. is very it's a very gray area for so many people so can yes. you just start with the basics depression yeah it, it has become a common statement and yes. common word yeah however the biggest challenge is not many people know what depression is mm -hmm. because somebody says i feel depressed mm -hmm. simply to mean i'm feeling sad i'm mm -hmm. feeling low mm -hmm. i've having a low mood mm -hmm. because depression is a mental disorder mm -hmm that is characterized by a low mood, okay. where somebody has persistent sadness, mm -hmm. feeling unworth, mm -hmm. feeling low, withdrawal from people. Mm -hmm. So when you have this number of symptoms, mm -hmm. maybe you show up in an hospital because of some other things, yeah. maybe just having a headache, mm -hmm. insomnia, and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you tell, tell the doctor, I'm not feeling well. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is happening. Mm -hmm. So a general clinician may just say, OK, this headache or fatigue, I have this. But somebody who wants to get interested to know exactly what can what be happening, happening yeah. will ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. How are you been feeling for the last 14 days and beyond? Because mm -hmm. that's how you diagnose the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, you make a diagnosis for depression. For depression. Okay. So they will ask you several questions, and now they will lead this. There is an impression mm -hmm. or depression. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You refer maybe to a counseling psychologist like myself, mm -hmm. who will do take you through an assessment. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can use a tool we call BEX, BDI mm -hmm. assessment tool, okay. where mm -hmm. you ask several questions mm -hmm. and you score. Mm -hmm. Out of that score, we can say, yes, actually you are depressed. Okay. And maybe it's moderate mm -hmm. or severe or extreme. Or extreme. Yes. Okay. We'll get more details in terms of then how do you gauge whether it is mild, moderate, or severe mm -hmm. um, as we continue with the show. But there's something that you said, impression or depression. <laughs> right wow right good. Yes. and then also um i think this is for you sarah in terms of just saying the word depression in itself um because a lot of the times like like um isaac said we just say ah, me, i'm feeling depressed today you know it's it's like a very term that we, a term that we use very loosely but really when you meet someone who's suffering or, or has suffered depression it's it's not something that we just say left right and center me i'm feeling depressed me i'm feeling depressed right mm -hmm. so in terms of the same um just the term itself, depression, and what it looks like, and especially when it comes to our lives and affecting our day-to-day -day activities. Paint that picture for us. You see, first of all, there's no, like, kikui word, or I don't even know, Swahili word to, to describe depression. I don't yes. know, is there? What do you see? 
Yeah, in my own account. <laughs> so there's no, so it's there's just no an English word. Yes. And uh, that's why it's very difficult to, even for us to be able to say, oh, yo, um, you know, I feel like, you know, mm. I'm this is depression. By the time you're saying that, things are really getting, but like you're realizing, oh, things, these are getting out, they're falling apart or something like that. Mm. So, uh, but I think it's very important for us to be more self-aware mm. and also take self-care very seriously. Mm. Take self-care self -care very seriously. Mm. But I also want to say, depression doesn't just happen just like that. Oh, I'm depressed, yeah. like that, you know, <laughs> or you are going to see a, a, a psychologist. Mm -hmm. Depression is a journey, it's a process. Mm -hmm. It starts from somewhere. Every stress develops from one negative thought. Yeah. So you entertain that negative thought. Well, when it's a negative thought, you entertain mm -hmm. it for a while. Mm -hmm. You stay with it for a while. Mm -hmm. It becomes, a, you know, an, some anxiety. You're mm -hmm. anxious. You stay with that anxiety for a while. It becomes what? Stress. You stay with that stress. It's unchecked. You, you just think, well, this is life. Uh, life mm -hmm. is difficult. Life has ups and downs, and I'm just going through this thing called yeah. life. So I'll make it. Mm -hmm. But then that thing is unchecked. Mm -hmm. It becomes chronic stress. You are mm -hmm. always under pressure. You are always stressed. And then now it graduates mm -hmm. into into depression. Mm -hmm. You know, now the results of depression can be anything. You know, so I think first of all, it's very important uh, for us to know what we allow into our minds, the kind of things that are coming into our minds, negative mm -hmm. thoughts, and what we should really, really be able to realize. Oh, this thought. It's making me feel like this for the past three days, for mm -hmm. the past five days, mm -hmm. and I need to watch that, mm -hmm. or I need to at least deal with this, you okay. know, or I need to open up and look for somebody I speak with. Sometimes I think, oh, it's just me. Well, I don't want to bother people, mm -hmm. and then you see something is really eating you up. So I yeah. think it's it's really important for us even to reach out. It just ask for help, by the way. Just yeah. asking for help, you realize, and that's why. But then you find many people even you know busting out in social media. Guys, I have been like this. Mm -hmm. Guys, I can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. De depression, by the way, you, is, you've reached a point where you're trying to be strong for too long. Yeah. You've really tried to be strong for too long until you, I find out but on, on social media, you'll see that I, I, th I can't take it, this anymore. Mm. Th this is just too much and you know, but it's good to just seek help. As yeah. he's saying, seek help, even if it's a friend, even if you don't want to cancel, just seek help. I'm going through this and I don't think it's, it's, it's good, it's, it's working for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. How can you help me help. or where can I get help? Yeah. But sometimes there's, there's usually a lot of stigma. Not even sometimes, most of the times, you know, associated with depression. Like, for instance, yeah. when you say people post on, on social media and say, hey, I am going through this and I do not know if I can take it anymore. When you go through the comments, the things that you will see, yeah, you know, it's, it's just... People Sad. will even be telling you, end it. Yo, exactly. You've been pretending, yeah, you've been right? watching. You know, people are so unkind, you know? Yeah, those, <laughs> so those are comments I saw where someone was asked, and I was yes. just like, people can be very, very insensitive. So I think That's that is why some people find it very difficult to to mm -hmm. ask for help. But of course, we'll also look at then, so who do you talk to? Yes. How do you, like, what is that process like for just going and seeking help? Because mm. it can be also a very scary process, yes, you yes, know, yes. for so many people. So we'll look at that in just a moment. And like you also said, that depression takes time. Mm. It's not like one time you're okay, then the following day you're you're depressed, like diagnosed with, with depression. It takes, yeah. It's a process. And Tugi, for you, this started a long time ago. Okay, not like a long time ago. It's like you're 70, 80. I'm not, I'm not that old. No, no. Ago. But yeah, it started when you were four. I was very young. I just want to break down a bit what depression feels like because you yeah. had asked what does it feel like when you're depressed. Yeah. Uh, it feels like a very, you feel a lot of sadness. Mm -hmm. There's sadness for, oh my gosh, Manchester United lost to yes. Manchester City. Wow. Yes. Um, but then <laughs> there's a deeper sadness, a sadness you cannot get rid of, a sadness you can't really pray away. You feel mm -hmm. that there are very many symptoms. You feel either insomnia, which means you can't sleep, mm -hmm or hypersomnia, which means you're sleeping all, all the, time. the time. There's uh, something called brain fog, where your thoughts are not clear. It's mm -hmm. difficult for you to make decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, simple things like what we lie where today it takes you a really long time. Mm -hmm. At the base of depression is the lack of motivation. Mm -hmm. You lose pleasure in the things that you'd find mm -hmm. you enjoy normally. So for example, if you enjoyed playing uh, football with your friends, mm -hmm. You just suddenly feel like I don't want I don't really to. Feel I don't. Like it's not honey Bambi. It's mm. not bringing me joy. Mm. Um, another symptom that I know I had was mm. you feel a lot of guilt and worthlessness mm. with no explanation. Mm. You just mm. wake up and you're like, oh, here I am again. Yeah. Why me? And these are thoughts you can't control. These are thoughts that come over you that are overwhelming mm -hmm. and a lot of times you feel like I'm guilty mm -hmm. for thinking these things. Sometimes your life is good. You've just 
you have you a have job, your family is stable, yeah. but you just have this deep-seated sadness that mm -hmm. you can't get rid of. Mm -hmm. Other times, in extreme cases, you begin to think, okay, you know what? I'm going to end it. Mm -hmm. This this is too much discomfort. This is too much pain. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to exist like this anymore. Okay. And a lot of times when someone reaches the point of suicide, it's not that they're looking for attention. Yes. It's that they're tired mm -hmm. of feeling how they feel. Yeah. So it's very ignorant for people to jest and joke at Nikulete Kamba. Exactly. I, what, which rat poison do I bring for you? Yeah. It's, it shows a lack of empathy, a lack of intelligence mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. When someone is saying, I'm sick, I need help, mm -hmm. I want a way out, mm -hmm. and we're like, how do we help you end Get your on, life? Yeah. That's, a, that's a lack it's, of it's very, empathy. You know, yeah. So and for you know, me, mm -hmm. I had, I've, for the longest time, as far back as I remember, I had this very deep-seated sadness mm -hmm that I could not get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, my parents were very kind to me. They were supportive. They love me. I mm -hmm. know that they love me. Mm -hmm. But there would just be this feeling deep inside of me that just, I'm not OK. I'm yeah. sad. I want to get rid of this feeling. Mm -hmm. And I'd begin to, whenever I'd feel really bad, I'd turn to music. Mm -hmm. So I'd start singing or I'd start playing. My mom was very insistent. She wanted me to learn how to play the piano. Mm -hmm. So that became an outlet for me yeah. as I grew up, and that's actually helped me in my recovery. Okay. But there's still such a huge, Sadness. deep, I don't know how to describe it. It feels like I have a concrete tank in my chest, just mm. seated on me. Yeah. Um, and slowly by slowly, I began to think, wait, what if I'm depressed? Mm -hmm. But I respect illness. You don't just walk around saying, oh, I have cancer because mm. I have a mole or a True. pimple. Hey, this must True. be cancer. So I was no. very hesitant to say I had depression. Mm. Until a point where I was like, I, I don't think this I'm is, okay. This is not And okay. the stigma you talked about, because yes. I was like, I've come from a good home. Mm. My, I love Jesus. I'm a Christian. Mm. How can I be depressed? My mom is a mental health practitioner. Mm. How can I be depressed? Mm. This means she has failed. But once yes. I learned that mental illness is an illness, just like chicken pox, just like cancer, just yes. like TB, Absolutely. it became something that Absolutely. I can I can say, okay, yeah, it's a sickness I have. Yeah. It's not the definition of who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm not a failure. My family is not a failure. My mom is not a failure. Okay. It's just a disease like a skin Like rash. any other thing. Yes. Yeah. And I think then if, if we approach it from that point of, I mean, like you said, this is a disorder. This yes. is this is an illness. It's, it's not because again, we've also had a lot of people who say people who are struggling with depression are actually weak, right? Oh. And it's just again, like you see those things on social media, and it just breaks your heart because yeah. then again, this makes it difficult, especially the fight, you know, again on mental illness it becomes difficult because again, people approach it from a point of ignorance, which is just sad. And to give, you've raised whew, very, very strong points that people really need to consider. And especially the fact that, number one, for a very long time for you, and especially like when you were a child, you felt this deep-rooted sadness, right? Because a lot of people would say, and especially for children, like you've not experienced life, yeah. so mm. what exactly do you know about sadness or yeah. depression and all those yeah. things? And Isaac, um, again, so what is like the age that is mostly maybe at risk of developing depression? Well, it's, it's good to define. Mm. Depression, most of the time, is out of a certain mm -hmm. pressure, a certain experience that you're mm -hmm. going through. It's a bit different from something like bipolar and mm. this other long-term or mm. lifetime management challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for depression, many times you'll find there's something that is stressing you. Mm -hmm. And that is what is now bothering you mm -hmm. and escalating from stress mm -hmm. to depression. Yeah. But majorly looking at the statistics, you'll find that uh, teenagers mm -hmm. between the age of 15 mm -hmm. to 40, that is the greatest range mm -hmm. because of several things. Mm -hmm. Adjusting to, to, to several stages in life, mm -hmm. the stresses of life, for example, if it's a student, or if it's a young person who is just adjusted to psychosocial economic issues. Mm. So you find the most factors that are stressing people, or if it's in relationship matters, maybe and faithfulness and all that, mm. you find this are a range of people who are going to have mm. issues. If you find children having this problem, mm. maybe it's because of issues in the family mm. that are now being transferred to these mm. children. And because of lack of exposure, mm -hmm. we usually say, despite this child is just disturbing. Mm. 
Mm. But you've not but really, time to know yes, what is really happening. understand what is happening with the child. Because many times when you look at the greatest challenge we have today, mm. is something we call SCE, adverse childhood experience. Mm. What children, be, what you go through between zero to eighteen years, affects a lot mm. and determines how you will be in future. Yes, in future. And yeah. this is one of the elements that we miss. Mm -hmm. And today, maybe today <coughs> you are behaving the way you are behaving because, because of what you went through. Exactly. And if it's not when picked at the right time, like. Um, colleague you are saying, says, yeah. it, 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 it bothers you more. It does, yes. it really does. I mean, again, life and, and, and how we were brought up, of course, will have an impact, yes. you know, in our adulthood. Yes. And Jefferson, again, for you, um, you also went through moments of depression, anxiety, you know, and all those things. Could you just take us back? Uh, my depression story was about, uh, it came from PTSD. Mm -hmm. The childhood trauma, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was being beaten a lot, so mm -hmm. yeah. So I never felt safe. Mm -hmm. You know, you're at home, mm -hmm. you're being beaten. Mm -hmm. You go to school. <laughs> same case. The same case, you know. Mm -hmm. So I started dating school mm -hmm. because I never felt safe mm -hmm. at home and even at school. Mm -hmm. So you go to school. You be beaten because you don't know like maths. Yeah. <laughs> I hated maths from class three. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. you know my best times were like when you're being sent home back for fee. Mm. Go back mm. home, mm. go get fee. Okay. Fees. But you know you're being chased away in the morning. Yeah. So you find your dad still still in the sitting room. He has not gone to work. So mm. <laughs> that's another depression because. Mm. You feel like this was my time to rest, mm -hmm. but now he gives you a letter. Go back to school, you okay. see. Okay. And school is not a safe place for you, mm -hmm. for you, for you to interact. Because I was a, I was a withdrawer. Mm -hmm. I used to withdraw a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, when it reached class six, mm -hmm. that's when things got intense. Mm -hmm. uh, performance was very low. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it affected my my grades. Like I hated math more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then uh, the things I liked, I, I couldn't even figure out. Like, what do I want? Mm -hmm. I loved music, but at that time I really didn't want to associate with music so much because I was still trying to figure out. Uh, What is my life like? Mm. Who am I? Mm. Mm. Yeah, you know, coming coming from that childhood, mm -hmm. being beaten like in a year, you be beaten like how many times? Maybe three hundred times mm. <laughs> out of three sixty-five like years, mm. you're yeah. being beaten like three hundred times. Mm. Then you're like, okay, I made a mistake. Mm. I'm wrong. Mm. I'm sorry, but can we just talk about it instead of? You beating me, you see. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, my dad knew discipline was through beatings, mm -hmm. but it brought about fear, mm -hmm. and then it made me be in like my own cocoon. Mm -hmm. I developed my own world now. Mm -hmm. I had my world that mm -hmm. uh, I felt safe, safe now. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That was in class six. I still mm -hmm. didn't know how to yeah. go about things. Mm -hmm. Then reaching high school now, that's when the depression hits hard. Mm -hmm. Performance is getting even worse. Mm -hmm. But I started loving school because home was so depressing such mm -hmm. that uh, the beatings are still continuing. Even in high school? Yeah. The, okay. uh, I was beaten for like 14 years from mm -hmm. the age of like six up to 20 years mm. so mm. that's when my dad told me that mm. <laughs> I, want, I want to teach you how to be a man mm. like seriously okay. I've never gone through childhood mm. I've missed play age mm -hmm. I've missed uh, being an adolescent mm. then you want to teach me how to be a man mm. at 20 mm -hmm. yet all these changes I've gone through when but I'm alone you see I needed yeah. a male figure mm. to keep me strong to know that like these things that you're going through, these developmental changes that you're going through, you're not alone, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. But 
I felt alone because even approaching him was, <laughs> was trouble, you mm. see. So it brought about fear. Mm. You know, you can be beaten, but uh, at the same time, you'll go back to your dad or your mom exactly. and tell them that this something, this something, something, something is happening. Yeah, you see? yeah. But yeah, you open more up. Intense, yeah, there's a could, yeah. there's a a good relationship between mm. you and your parents and your caregivers. Mm. You see, mm. they are supposed to be your caregivers. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to give you love. They're supposed to support you mm -hmm. in everything that you're going through, mm -hmm. in every milestone that you'll be undergoing. You see, mm -hmm. so uh, <laughs> first of all, I was lied to that my mom went to America. So I saw my mom after like. 11, 12 years, so, mm. <laughs> yeah, because my dad told my mom that if I live with this child, mm -hmm. it's going to be weak. Okay. So he believed that a man should be beaten for him to be like tough enough. strong. Yeah, you have to toughen up. Mm. A man should toughen up, but mm. uh, to the point I've reached, uh, all that I know that a strong man is the one who, like, who has gone through emotional stuff. Mm. Because physicality, yeah, it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, uh, going back, back to the story. Yeah. And just hold on, uh -huh. because it, it's a lot that she said. Um, mm. And I'm just, it's just sad. And I'm so sorry, because <laughs> you've talked about safety. Yeah. Um, you know, where at home you didn't feel safe. Yeah. In school you did not feel safe. Yeah. And though you, you felt alone most of the times, mm. um, there's also like a lot of expectations for you. Yeah. Um, you know, as a child you need to be a man, mm. you know. Mm. So didn't go through all those changes, didn't go through childhood, you know, experiences, experiencing childhood as it is, teenagehood as it is. Mm. You always had to behave in a certain way yeah. to somewhat avoid being bitten. Mm. Um, and, and Sarah, just listening to his story and also listening to Tugi's story where I mean, both parents were loving and kind and, you know, supportive and all those things, but still, she still felt that deep-seated sadness, right? What do you pick from these two, two uh, stories? You know, as I said, stress always starts from somewhere. It starts from stress, mm. you know. It always starts from somewhere. Either it's a negative experience or it's abuse. Like, like for his case, it, it was abuse. More of abuse, yes. yes. Yeah. For her, I mean, she had loving parents and all that. I know about there must be something just negative that was just sitting with her mm -hmm. or something she had seen she could not reconcile with her mind and maybe mm -hmm. could not open up to the parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it always starts from that. And I think uh, when it's abuse, mm -hmm. you know, especially when it's abuse and for a child, you know, um, I mean, it can be very traumatic, mm -hmm. very, very mm -hmm. traumatic. And I mean, all of us like African kids. <laughs> so, and for some years, like uh, those born in the 80s, yes. and the 70s, I mean, I've been raised by military parents. I, mean, I think we are really strong. Yeah. <laughs> we are really strong. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I mean, beating is the way to discipline. These days, at least parents know of you talk, yeah. you negotiate, mm -hmm. you do that. That was not the case. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, it's, it's very important even for parents, mm -hmm. for parents to know the kind of, to interact with their children try and reason things out with them. I think that that's important. Mm -hmm. And also, at least now we have awareness, we have information, it's the information mm -hmm. age. Back then it wasn't there. But I think uh, what would really make a child really go through all that is, f first of all, mm -hmm. it's painful, you're going through a painful experience too. Mm -hmm. You don't have somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And even if you speak, you're like, ah, unasumbua. Mm -hmm. Ama, you know, this child ni, ni kierere, tu ni shida, ni nini, you, you looked at it. So you keep quiet, yes. yes. So, so you keep quiet. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere you can speak, you can't relate to with anyone else. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very traumatic for that child. And that's why you find these children, they start engaging in um, whether it's drug abuse. Mm -hmm. You're trying to look for solace somewhere or a safety because you didn't have safety at home. Mm -hmm. You're trying to look for solace somewhere, trying to look for safety somewhere where you can just be yourself and you can just be. It. Now, anyone who comes and, and gives him uh, something to, that makes him feel good about himself. Ah, uh, yeah, you're a man. Of a man course. should smoke. A man should yes. do this. Yeah, anything it's that makes easy you for feel, them to fall into. Yeah, that. you yeah. can fall into that, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, but, but luckily I, <laughs> I think it didn't go that way. But I mean, many children will start even those kind of things, even sexual, getting into sexual, exactly. uh, you know, morality and all that. Mm -hmm. Just feel uh, you a, know, a certain identity, a certain accepted. belonging, and yes. acceptance and, and love. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, 
I, I think it's just a word out to the parents. Mm -hmm. You know, to really watch out what uh, I mean. Exactly. I just have conversation with their children. With the children. Yes, okay. Yes. Isaac, you want to add on to that? Yeah, I just, mm -hmm. what, what uh, Jackson has just described mm -hmm. is a typical case of adverse childhood experience. Mm -hmm. So only that now we are in the studio, when he comes to see me, mm -hmm. I will, one of the things that I will do is do an assessment for SEE. Mm -hmm. And scoring about seven, out, because it's out of ten, mm -hmm. scoring out of seven, mm -hmm. then you love now the things that Sarah is talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You love somebody either having a mental disorder, mm -hmm. getting into crime, mm -hmm. uh, getting into drug and substance abuse, having challenges with relationships. Mm -hmm. So all this. Mm -hmm. So typically, what, what, what he has described is an experience that is not very desirable. Mm -hmm. And that's now that leads to several other disorders and other problems in the society. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And then what does this say, especially for parents? Because people say, again, you only give what you have, right? Mm -hmm. And for so many of us, I mean, like Sarah said, we grew up being beaten. Right, and and that is the only way we knew this is how you discipline a child. But you see, for for Jefferson's case, it was more of abuse than yeah, discipline. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think at least that is what we get, you know, from from the same. So in terms of then the parents to get to understand, and you know what, at the end of the day, whatever you do to this child now will also have an impact to them when when they grow up. As a client. so then what what does this say to the parents? Is it that then most of them have had maybe traumas before when they were children growing up? Maybe yes. his father knew this is the only way to maybe he was beaten himself. Is there's something we call trans generational trauma. Yes. When you draw a genogram, mm. a genogram just showing or rather simply put, mm. looking at this, the history mm -hmm. of the father and the grandfather, mm -hmm. you may find a certain problem that is running in the family. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they see that now they are transparent. The parents mm -hmm. are not aware. Mm -hmm. Until now, somebody comes to their attention. Do mm -hmm. you realize that what you are doing to your son is what your dad did to you? Mm -hmm. And then it continues to hurt them. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying to parents is that let's seek help from a professional. Mm -hmm. When you have a lot of pain within yourself and sadness as you are transferring to someone else, mm -hmm. reflect on yourself. Mm -hmm. Even at the, whichever level, if you're having issues with the relationships, mm -hmm. look at it and ask yourself, could I be projecting something that I did not have? Okay. You cannot offer love when you don't when have love. When you do love. not have, yeah. Because that's what you experience in your mm -hmm. childhood. So it keeps on transferring from one generation to the, to the other, other, to the other. And then you wonder, why is this the mm -hmm. case? Because no one of them, none of them sought help. Yeah. Actually, in Kenya, in Africa, many times we only seek help when you have a toothache, True. when you have a headache, it does not hurt, when, not when it, it doesn't <laughs> physically hurt, when it doesn't physically hurt, mm -hmm. we think we are okay. With, yeah. Yet, psychologically is everything. Mm -hmm. The mind is everything. Mm -hmm. Look at the latest statistics. 50% mm -hmm. of the people who work in an hospital on a daily basis, mm -hmm. for different reasons, it doesn't have to be mental health, mm -hmm. just maybe diabetes, blood pressure, mm -hmm. an accident or something, 50% mm -hmm. are depressed. Yeah. Unfortunately, about only 10% get diagnosed. Get help. That is sad. Yeah, that's so sad. So people are going through a lot, mm -hmm. especially during this time where we are talking about psychosocial economic challenges. Mm -hmm. So it's con people continue to suffer, and they are not aware. Mm -hmm. And now they project to other people. To other people. Look at the stories that are trading on a daily basis. Yeah. Suicide, mm -hmm. homicide, mm -hmm. femicide, all this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is an indication of people who have a lot that have kept themselves, mm -hmm. a lot of anger issues. Mm -hmm. And somebody comes, okay, I want you to help me to deal with anger. Mm -hmm. The first question is, tell me about your history. Mm -hmm. Say, no, I cannot give you techniques on how to manage anger mm -hmm. when I cannot go to the root cause of the problem. Get to understand why. And I think that is where most people yes. are scared to go back to, you know, mm. going back to Tsumko <laughs> and Kuchimba to understand yeah. what, what brings up all yes. those things. We're, yes. we're just too scared. We do not want to go back there. Yes. Okay. So to for you, again, during your childhood, um, you know, period where, yes, you're experiencing really, uh, you know, like deep sadness. But then again, you don't know what exactly it is. You just know that you're really, 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 really sad. Yeah. And, and like you said earlier on, you don't even know how to explain it because I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to understand that level of deep sadness deep because sadness. a lot of people might not really understand. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why some people might be ignorant mm -hmm. <laughs> about the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. So do you at some point probably try share with your parents, just express how you're feeling? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Uh, but before I get to answer that question, there's a couple of things I want to say. First of okay. all, this, co this conversation is very heavy for anyone to listen yes, to. Yes, it is. Um, I it want to is. begin by saying that what you don't deal with, you actually become. Mm -hmm. yes. So yeah. if you're a parent and you know you had a difficult upbringing or these things from your childhood, suppressing it actually makes it grow. It, it compounds. And before you know it, you're doing things that 
you never you you become this person you never wanted to become mm -hmm. that's one mm -hmm. two depression is described as the common cold of mental, mental illness. health illness yes so it's like a homer that's how mm -hmm. common it is mm -hmm. and nobody walks around thinking i have a homer mm -hmm. i am so sick mm -hmm. no one should look at me mm -hmm. it's a common it's a common illness mm -hmm. So if you find you're feeling really low, or you find you don't have motivation, mm -hmm. or you find these symptoms of depression that we're describing are what you have, it's the right response is to say, hey, okay, I think this thing is coming. Let me see how I can prepare. Mm -hmm. Not, Nimesha, it's over, I'm done. <laughs> In I'm fact, sasa ni madhari tunaenda. <laughs> no, it's just the common cold of mental illness. Yeah. The third thing I wanted to say was, when we speak about men's mental health, which mm. is something I'm extremely passionate about, mm. statistics have shown that women are diagnosed more with mental illness because they, they the find it easier to talk about it. Yeah. But when we look at the suicide rates, men, the men are more likely to commit suicide than yeah. women because you're told, be a man, mm. be strong. Jikaze, mm. mm. kujikaza. Mm. That's one of the worst things I think we've ever And I come really up hope with. that nobody still uses that term. I hope I, if, you, if you hear someone <laughs> saying Manomeni Kujikaza, just Stop tell them, them what? Stop Stucky. them. <laughs> because we need to we need to make it okay to talk about how we yes. feel. Mm -hmm. And if we're able to talk about how we feel, then we're able to change the mm -hmm. distorted thoughts that now sit in our minds and create um, the feelings of depression. Yeah. So like she had said earlier, mm -hmm. it's the negative thoughts you have in your mind, but mm -hmm. where did those negative thoughts come, come from? from? Yeah. You need to sit and like dig through, mm -hmm. but that's why we have professionals mm -hmm. who are trained to help you mm -hmm. to give you the correct language to explain mm -hmm. so for example if you if like in my case they were child psychologists there's mm -hmm. people who are trained to deal with children mm -hmm. and give them the language to say oh I'm feeling sad why are mm -hmm. you crying so much mm -hmm. how are you feeling what can we do mm -hmm. there's things like play therapy yeah. that really enable the child to express how they are feeling without mm -hmm. using words there's okay. art therapy there's music therapy mm -hmm. there's a lot of tools available mm -hmm. to equip parents and children mm -hmm. adolescents and older people mm -hmm. to just get the treatment they need, they need yeah the other mm -hmm. thing I wanted to say mm -hmm. was when we think of um, mental illness and the causes of mental illness they are very many oh, absolutely. it's not just it's, your it's, thoughts yeah. it's something called genetic disposition something mm -hmm. like depression runs in families mm -hmm. so if sorry so if your grandparents were depressed or you've had stories of hey, someone mm. committed suicide in this family. In yep. this family, all of them die by suicide. Yeah. That's a sign. There's a genetic There's thing a happening. That's going on. There's yeah. also chemical imbalances in the brain. Mm. Our emotions, our, our physical growth and our emotional growth mm. is monitored by hormones in the brain. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just chemicals in your brain that mm. are confused or they're not working correctly. Mm -hmm. Then you have depression. Okay. It's not that you've set out to be sad mm -hmm. or, or you just want to be sad or you just want to be sad so people. you're you're <laughs> seated in your room the whole day you can't come out you're not eating you're not yeah. sleeping mm -hmm. it's as it's as simple as serotonin dopamine mm -hmm. confused in the brain and isaac of course is here together with sarah she just yeah. help us really understand more yes the so not to answer yes. your question was mm -hmm. i able to speak to my parents mm -hmm. i was and mm -hmm. they actually they learned that when they are hearing me playing the piano, there's something there's that's something. bugging me. Mm. So your children actually communicate to you. Okay. The beautiful thing about a parent is you have the opportunity to learn this small human being, mm. learn how they communicate. Children are always talking. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is listen. listen. They are always telling us. They are showing us. Mm -hmm. If they won't say it with words because they don't have the vocabulary, mm -hmm. their behavior will change. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage parents, be very observant, be mm -hmm. approachable mm -hmm. uh, to your children. Okay. Allow them to feel safe around you. Even when you know you don't really know what you're doing, there's information on the internet. Mm -hmm. There's people you can talk to. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of resources now available to parents. There's a lot of research on depression yeah. out. Mm -hmm. The WHO is one of the leading voices. Mm -hmm. There's African psychologists who are also talking about what depression looks like in an African in a, yeah. setting. Mm -hmm. So that information is available. I just don't want people to feel depressed because <laughs> we are talking about <laughs> very heavy, it's heavy and depressing see, things. No, it's heavy but very necessary it's conversation. Very 
because again, given, yeah. given what we've been saying since we started the show, and that is sometimes people can be very ignorant, and out of ignorance, we, we tend to say things yeah. that aggravate, you know, the situation. So yeah. it is heavy, yes, yeah. but it is important it's for all important, of us to have definitely. these conversations. And I also want to hear from you watching us, if you've ever struggled with depression, what is your experience with the same? Feel free to also interact with us at NTV Kenya, Lubeme underscore winning. You want to call in? Feel free to do so. And let's just talk about mental health and of course today it's all about depression so yes it is heavy <laughs> but very very um necessary so jefferson as well um and and to get, um before i get to, to jefferson so yes you raised you know whatever it is that you were feeling with your with your parents yeah. what was the initial reaction um the initial reaction was we need to do something about it mm, okay um my my Parents did they were, understand? They did. They were very were proactive. Oh, yeah, but you said your mom. Is it school that's bugging you? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, yeah, 844. 844 can, <laughs> should be listed as a cause of depression. <laughs> <laughs> because the pressure we go through, yes. children as young as eight yes. are in a bus at 5 a.m. Yes. These grades. <laughs> are, we, are we going to... It's a, it's a really important question. It are really we going is. to pay medical bills? Yeah. Because our children are sick. Are we going to allow them to be children and actually have a, a wholesome education? Mm -hmm. So my parents were very proactive. They were asking, is it the school that's stressing you? Are yeah. you being beaten for not understanding math? Yeah. How is being beaten? Mm -hmm. How will it help you get the grade you need? Mm -hmm. So they, they were really proactive in how they raised me mm -hmm. to ensure that they want to create this whole human being mm -hmm. who is well-rounded, mm -hmm. who is not being pressured mm -hmm. um and so they began to look for help okay. they began to ask questions mm -hmm. they began to change i think parents have to choose to be a bit unconventional mm -hmm. for the sake of their, of children. their children yeah i hear you yeah. i hear you so jefferson again felt alone mm -hmm. for a very long time mm -hmm. could not talk to your dad so this time you're living with your dad alone because yeah. you were told your mom how you go around, <laughs> right? But she was in Shago. But she was. Yeah. Alikwa yeah. Shags and you, you were in Nairobi with, yeah. your, with your dad, yeah. right? So could not talk to him and tell him what you're going through mm. that is in school and even mm. at home you do mm. not feel safe. Yeah. Went to high school, somewhat liked high school. Uh, right. About high school. Yes. Okay. Did you like it? Did you not? Did you? Uh, were you a bit safe? <laughs> because you said at home, yes. you continue to be beaten until you were 20. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in school, did you? Yeah. Uh, high school was the heaviest moment mm. uh, because I liked school a little because uh, there are no canes now, mm. but mm. the beatings were at, at home. home. Yeah. Okay. So there is external pressure mm. and internal pressure. Mm. I have to perform to impress my dad. So that you're not Yeah, beaten. so I'm not beaten. Okay. But I'll, I'll end up being mm. beaten. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, because okay. the first thing you get at home yeah. is your results. Where are your results? Mm -hmm. You can't hide them. Maths. That's the first thing. You have a D. Mm. You have an E. Mm. That's a beating. Mm -hmm. Why? Why mm -hmm. do you have... I was even taken to tuition a lot of times, but mm -hmm. still I go to school. I don't understand math. Okay. <laughs> this math thing <laughs> is like know, a big problem <laughs> for so many people. I'm having a lot of challenges in yeah. my mind, mm -hmm. and I can't speak them out because, like, I've already created a barrier. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to socialize with people. Mm -hmm. That childhood play mm -hmm. that I missed mm -hmm. now manifests in mm -hmm. class. You can't ask okay. someone, I have a problem in this, mm. in this sum. Yeah. You know, mm. what I know, I'll keep to myself. Okay. What you know, keep to yourself, I won't ask you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's how uh, everything was about high school then. Mm. Uh, but you said things became heavier. Yeah, uh, that, that's in performance. Oh, okay. okay yeah, yeah, performance right. wise. Mm -hmm. So... I used to get depressed, mm. uh, like maybe the whole time, mm. but I still didn't know. That you were depressed at Yeah, it was taking a long time then someone, someone could ask me like, mm. why are you just walking like you're tired, mm. you know, <laughs> like mm. <laughs> you don't want to go to class, yeah. mm. people are running and you're walking, you're walking. you look yeah. confused, mm. like I was in my own world. Mm. 
then i was all, i was always prepared mm. like aka mulima nakuja kunichapa akuja nichape like i'm, I'm now used, got used to, to it yeah i'm now used to it because now i'm used to pain mm. the emotional pain is already there now oh, the physical mm. yeah so just hurt me <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah you know so it was like that then uh, i missed classes mm. like the math thing now was a problem was, mm. a, was a big problem i tell you because uh, my book was unmarked mm. my math book okay. was unmarked mm. from form 2 to term 3 oh wow till form 4 oh. the day i left school wow huh? i missed math classes for yeah. all those years yeah. Yeah. and nobody knew i was going for pe every day so i i, I come and look at the timetable when is math yeah at you what go. time yeah i skip yeah wow. i go to pe <laughs> you know <laughs> there are like five streams mm. in every form yeah. so from one from two from three from four yeah so it's, it's really difficult it's to, it's, to, it's to very easy to go for pe because if you see people in the field mm you'll join them exactly but yeah. you're not going you're not going to do anything you're mm. not going to play with them you're mm. going to hide mm. Mm. because you have issues on your mind that you mm. that you don't want to talk you about that you want to, to leave about. behind yeah so uh mm. even the mm. innings the mm. yeah when people used to come for mm. the functions the okay. funkies we used to call them funkies you used to go for that a lot <laughs> no okay. i didn't go to funkies oh you you did not yeah oh yeah because then you I'll, have to interact with people i used to sleep from nine to five oh, wow. <laughs> in a hot blanket yeah in a hot environment you know our school was very hot so like hey. sleeping from nine to five then when i wake up the mm. only thing uh, I ran back to his music. Mm. So, you, you know, so people are, like, were writing love letters to their, mm. their fake girlfriends, mm. but <laughs> I was the R&B master. They called oh, me the master you? of R&B. <laughs> so I you took, gave them all the words. Yeah, I, I gave them all the lyrics yeah. because um, I remember in class six, that's when music started manifesting. Okay. Uh, like in terms of lyrics okay i was oh, a so very Jefferson... good lyricist so oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh you know writing for them the for yeah you. the love words and yes. everything so that was you became my, a favorite all of a sudden yeah that was my <laughs> high moment oh, okay then i was okay. writing on my books like r and for life you mm. know that was an escape route for mm. me uh mm. when i was depressed mm. so anytime i felt down I went you to music. You would actually music, go to yeah. music and write. So okay. I started writing music in uh, Form 1. Mm. Uh, I wrote a love song, but it was not really a love song mm. because mm. when I looked at it, it was a lonely song because oh. it, <laughs> it came back to me. Mm. Then the second song was like... I have a lot of songs. Okay. Yeah. I'd want to listen to especially that song that that you wrote, maybe the first one that you said when you come like looking back, mm -hmm. it was more of like lonely sad yeah. song as compared to Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to listen to it, but let's just take this caller and then we'll come back to you, okay. Bridget from Kisi. Good morning. Morning to you. Thank you very much for calling us this morning, Bridget. Do you have a question, a comment? No, me I have a story. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so as for me, mm. I hated Kiswahili when I was in standard before. All right. And uh, as I went by, when mm. I did my KCC exam, mm. I passed it just because I just wanted it to boost me. Mm. Thinking that in Form 1, I was going to get a good Kiswahili teacher so that my attitude would change. Mm. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, now, the Kiswahili teacher that I got was even worse than I thought. Right. Of which my Kiswahili attitude has never changed up to today. <laughs> and all the subjects I may pass, but Kiswahili, even my mother would sit down and ask me yeah. about the languages. Kiswahili. Kiswahili. Yeah. How do you have to fail it? Mm -hmm. If English you can get 80, mm -hmm. then how about Kiswahili? Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mother is someone whom 
ukijaribu kumwangelesha mm. she's like you are speaking nonsense something of that sort and you can even get into a conflict mm. so unapata tu menyamaza mm. when you have a problem you are just quiet mm-hmm. and uh, because you don't have anyone to share with as to me personally mm-hmm. i just uh, decided to write when i have a problem mm-hmm. i just write in a book mm-hmm. at least i can feel relieved okay yeah all right so- Thank you very much for sharing um, with us your story, Bridget. And, and again, like we said, this is a very, very heavy conversation. How about you take a break? And of course, when we come back, would, would, you know, um, focus on especially what Jefferson, you said, um, they got so much used to the pain, especially emotional pain, that the physical really didn't hurt you much. And that is a very strong statement, um, you know, to say, and, and I'd want us to unpack that, um, you know, Sarah, plus also Bridget, again, who found ways to deal, you know, with, with, with the same, and that is to write. So keep, um, you know, talking to us as far as uh, the topic of conversation is, and that is on depression. You want to call in, feel free to do so. You want to tweet at NTV Kenya at Lubembe underscore Winnie. Again, feel free to do so. We'll be looking at your feedback when we come back from the break. Stay with us. This is your world. Welcome back. Glad you're still with us. The show is Your World. And today, again, we're talking about a very heavy conversation, but very, very, very necessary. I mean, it's a conversation that we need to be having every single day amongst ourselves, our peers, family, you know, so that we really, really get to understand more. And that is as far as depression is concerned. But before we continue with the discussion, suicide rates in the country have increased dramatically over the past few years. And rarely does a day go by without a case of death by suicide. And according to police data, more than 500 people in the country took their lives in the first six months of 2021 and more than the number of all of 2020. So suicide is often the culmination of a number of factors that present the, um, the person with a one-way fits all solution so that death is the only way and the best way out. Entevis Rosongui spoke to three people who all attempted to take their own lives here and they talk about what they were feeling when they believed there was no way out, how depression grabbed them and wouldn't let go and they reflect on what's happened since, how they cope and most importantly how they are doing better. My name is Sandra Hisa. I am an artist and a mental health advocate. I am 27 years old. When I was born, I used to suffer from anxiety attacks when I was very young. I was affected by the post-election violence and it, it affected me in a way that I didn't get therapy after that. So when I went to high school, I developed full depression. We used to live close to town, Eldoret town. So whenever there was chaos in town, people would run towards where we used to stay. And I developed PTSD because anytime I saw people running, I would think I would go back to that time during post-election violence. And it also affected the way I related with people because the people who used to, okay, during post-election violence, it was neighbor turning against neighbor. So I lost trust in people. I didn't know who was safe to open up to. But when I got into depression, people thought maybe I was being a snob. Others thought I was just seeking attention when I said I was not feeling okay. Because when they looked at me physically, I looked like I was okay. In high school, at a point, I attempted to take my own life. And nobody even knew about it. I didn't tell anyone. 
I, it was not successful. I decided to just go on with my life and focus on living one day at a time. I remember when I joined campus, there's this group of friends who we used to hang out with, uh, share experiences, study together, and none of them knew that I was going through depression. And I started withdrawing and isolating myself from them, but one of them noticed, and I'm glad that she used to check up on me almost every week. And now I was planning how I would do it. And then that day, she didn't even call me to tell me that she was coming. She just showed up. And that is what saved my life because if she had not, I most likely would have gone through with it. So after I got therapy, I was okay for a while, but I didn't really know how to cope. I didn't have healthy coping mechanisms. Uh, and at some point, I started relapsing. My name is Julian Onyango, and uh, I have attempted suicide three times in my life. First in uh, 2010, another one in 2013, and uh, the last one very uh, lately, 2018 to be precise. I realized that I have a problem, and uh, I'm on a journey to work on things that put me there. I have packed gym to be my self-care. When I go there, I'm not going there to build my body. I'm also going there to build my mental fortitude. I'm going there to lose habits that I think are not good for me, harmful for me. I was uh, raised in a very, a very toxic family. My father was a serious alcoholic and uh, that prompted my mother to leave us at some point. Growing up, I've been a young man full of hate full of pain, full of anger, distorted moods, and uh, most of the time, for me to fit in, or for me to be happy, for me to feel that I belong in the world, I had to drink a lot of alcohol. Now that alcohol is a normal thing in the house where I was raised, and I saw my dad happy while drunk, and I thought probably that what made manhood. I have an initiative called Speak Up, Speak Up is to encourage people to speak up about mental health problems. We want to make mental health a normal topic to talk about. The way we can talk about uh, cancer, we can talk about headaches, we can talk about stomach aches. That perception of when you mention mental health, someone directly goes to Mwendo Azimu, we want to change that narrative. Because mental health is as important as your physical health. When people are thinking of taking their life, it's not about dying. To them, it's ending this uh, unbearable psychological pain. We normally don't take any suicidal threat for granted. We don't take it as a joke. We don't take it as somebody seeking for attention. That is someone you need to be very close to. That is someone who needs to be, to be monitored. But again, as you ask, what kind of help do we offer to these people? Sometimes prayers, taking them for exorcism, taking them for to traditional illness, at that point, it is good, yes, to go for prayers, but at that time, that is not what will help them. Once in a while, bring out that issue of, I think we can go and see a mental health practitioner and offer to go with them. All right, very, very strong point over there as far as, you know, attempting suicide. Um, and of course, from what the person said, it's not about just dying. It's about ending this pain that, you know, someone feels, um, you know, deep-seated um, with them. And of course, I'd also want to hear from you. If you have had an experience with depression, how were you able to manage it? How were you able to let's say come out stronger, or if you are struggling with the same now and you want to call in and ask a question, maybe seek help, again, feel free to do so. We have our counselor, we have a life coach, and we also have mental health advocates right here on the panel today to just help you out. Because at the end of the day, like we said, this is a conversation that we need to keep having so that we demystify some of this myths surrounding mental health and, of course, depression. So before we went for break, said, of course, you had something to say. Um, I think I first noticed. I know we have the high school students at home yes. for seven weeks now. Mm. <laughs> They're going to be home for seven yes, weeks. Yes, like all the learners, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yes. First high school and primary, this. yes. Um, you are always reaping what you sow. You hate mm. Kiswahili, you hate physics, you mm. hate mathematics, mathematics hits you back. 
So when you hit something, you don't spend time with this. You don't study you were, like what you were saying. Mm -hmm. We don't attend the, in the maths class. Mm -hmm. Maths was also not my favorite, but mm -hmm. I, I try. But you know, it was not my favorite. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what, it, you hit the subject, it hits you back. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, and you won't pass. And you you think you're punishing a, a teacher. Maybe you don't like the teacher, or mm -hmm. just don't like the subject. But it's actually affecting you. Mm -hmm. And the same, if you love the subject, you spend more time with it, mm -hmm. and you will pass. Mm -hmm. You know, you spend. You want to ask the teacher, follow the teacher, ask other students. Well, how do I do? How do I solve this problem? How do I get this formula? Mm -hmm. What you will pass. Let me first of all say that. So mm -hmm. you're always ripping what you saw. But, but you also, let me say this. Yeah? with a case of trauma, because yes. you see, for Jefferson's case, mm -hmm. and um, and I think Bridget, if if I heard her correctly, mm -hmm. it was more of trauma. Like mm -hmm. I failed math mm -hmm. the first time, and I was beaten badly. Yes. So it's not like I hate math. Mm -hmm. It's just the trauma that is associated let's say with a subject in itself yes this is another case of me i just hate math mm. and you see you try mm. you fail but you keep trying but then again when there's trauma surrounding the same where you think so math you his, think mm. yes you so even in his case eh, mm. if it, because he was beaten you feel mad and then you see ah i won't sit as on my sabutena it's also because you also want to kind of get back you mm. know you're beating me because of this I, I won't do it, I'm supposed to read, I'm supposed to, but I won't do it to mm -hmm. either make you feel uh, bad or, or revenge or something mm -hmm. like that. There's also that element, mm -hmm. you know, there is also that element, but you mm -hmm. don't realize it's also affecting you very much. Mm -hmm. It's affecting you. But let me also say this, please, in anything, please don't get used to misery. Mm -hmm. Don't get used to misery. Mm -hmm. You are sad every day. Mm -hmm. You are crying every day. Whether it's in a relationship that you are in, you cry every day, mm -hmm. or it's anything that you're doing. But whether it's uh, you're a child or whatever, whatever age that mm -hmm. you are, please don't get used to misery. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I, I always say, please, if you are a child, uh, you know, we've, we've had this story. We've, we've had a story. If you're a child, if you're in primary or if you're in high school and you feel it. By the way, I was in a girls' school the other day because I usually do some of these uh, mentorship programs in mm -hmm. high schools and uh, you know a girl was telling me you know that uh, for me since childhood I've been having this pain in me and I always feel depressed and I, I was telling her she wouldn't come to speak to me you know she, they just write the paper mm -hmm. I always feel depressed and I was trying to tell her you know first of all there are things you go through in life and uh, you've, you've, you've been depressed all this time mm -hmm. and it, uh, it's affecting your studies it's affecting the way you relate with people you're always withdrawing you know that's what was in the paper that's what yes. she had written mm -hmm. and, I, and I say first of all there are things that happen to you that you never be able to change you cannot change the past mm -hmm. whether it's your parent who was beating you or uh, something you are abused or something like that you cannot change the past mm -hmm. there are things that happen to you first of all you have to forgive for you to heal because what we want is for you to heal you first of all need to forgive these people find forgiveness first of all even forgive yourself mm -hmm. there are things you do go through and you even need to forgive yourself you need to forgive these people or uh, for you to be better mm -hmm. some things that you even go through life even you need to ask for forgiveness from your maker or m maybe you are also involved in some of these things you mm -hmm. even need to ask for forgiveness so that can be a part of feeling. First of all, try and see how can I forgive myself? How can I accept myself? How can I love myself? How can I uh, forgive this person? Forgiveness is also something that can help you be able to heal. But mm. my point is, please don't get used to misery. Yeah. Share it out. Talk mm. about it. You can't speak to your parent. Get a pastor. Or get a, if in, in school you have the guidance and counseling teacher, mm -hmm. speak with them. Mm -hmm. If you can't trust them, you have a trusted friend that you can speak with. Mm -hmm. You can trust them. They won't go, you, you trust yeah, them. Sure speak it out. Yes, important. I, I mm -hmm. think that's very important. Yeah, and I think, I think trust, again, before you mentioned it, it was like, yeah, but you know, trust is very, you know, it's, 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 it's very vital. And, and, and I'm trying to, to relate this, for instance, for Jefferson's case here. Yeah? Mm. So, can trust the parents, can trust the teachers in school, because both of them, you know, so it's like me, I've d built this wall where, don't come, Mimi, I'll, I'll just live with my own problems. Yeah. I'll not share it with, yeah. with anyone else. Mm. So then, finding someone to trust and share, I think mm. might be a very big challenge you know for, for so many people and i also want you to react um isaac again to what he said that very, very strong statement that i got used to the heart that at say whatever you do i mean not say like then <laughs> whatever it is that you do just come come beat me it's okay you know like getting used to emotional you know, heart i will simplify all this mm. to a few things okay number one mm. there's something we call copy mechanisms mm -hmm. so when you are beaten or whatever you go through mm naturally you do, you find a copy mechanism mm -hmm. some of them are wrong others are good yeah. so denying mm -hmm. rationalizing mm -hmm. 
displacing to people, projecting to people, mm. all this getting to alcohol, getting mm. to extreme sexual behaviors and all that. These are copy mechanisms mm. that we naturally, without even thinking about it, mm. we rush and start doing some things okay. we, to cope with the problem. Mm -hmm. That's one about the, 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 the behaviors that we mm -hmm. develop. Number two, the issue of trust. Mm -hmm. I'm a therapist. Every day, this is what I do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. The issue of trust, especially in our setup, mm -hmm. in our world, mm -hmm. when you share with Winnie, who is not a professional mm -hmm. in that field, mm -hmm. she will share with her colleague, and the, the story continues. Yes. And that's why people don't share with their colleagues, because I ask them, how come that you've gone through all this and you've not, not shared, shared with, with anyone? anyone? You've been molested, you've been sexually abused, you have been... This list, including your own parents, mm. have... Of course, our work is very private, so I may not mention details mm. per se, but somebody has been raped, and mm. she cannot tell her own parents. Mm. Why? Because my parents will shout at me and all that, and typically it happens. Mm. So at the end of the day, People have lost trust, even their closest people. Yeah. And the only way they can find help is to a professional, mm -hmm. who, of course, our work is, we keep a lot of professionalism. Mm -hmm. However, this is what I can send to the world mm -hmm. and to those who are watching us. Mm -hmm. Let's be kind to people. Mm -hmm. Whatever, people are going At through a lot. Least, yeah. Let's stop pushing people mm -hmm. to an extreme. Mm -hmm. If it's a parent, let's stop pushing our children to an extreme because of our own issues. Let's work on our own. Mm -hmm. If it's a partner with another partner, let's stop pushing the mm -hmm. other colleagues, uh, our partners, because you don't know what they are going through, mm -hmm. and you are not helping them. You are just hooting at them, hooting at them, mm -hmm. and they cannot have peace of mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. The issue of uh, the grades and all this in schools and mm -hmm. what is happening in schools, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's a question of how we have modeled our society. Mm -hmm. We modeled a society where uh, we are seen as successful if we are students by grade. Mm -hmm. If we are seen as successful when we, have, uh, when we are employed and having a lot of money, we are driving the best cars, we have the best suits <laughs> and, and everything. Yeah. We are so materialistic, capitalistic mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. And we can fight and do anything for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. This is wrong. Let's have a balance. Okay. Let's have a balance of life. Mm -hmm. Whatever that we do, let's just be mm. simple. Okay. Something that she was really actually yeah, bringing it up. Yes. I wanted to say something. <laughs> yeah. To the students who are at home, to the parents who are now like seven weeks with my children, what mm. will I do? What do I do with this even. one? <laughs> I just want to say this. You are not your grade. Where is the camera? Which camera should I look okay. at? Your You're not your grade. Yeah. You're not that A. Mm. You're not that E. Yeah. You're not that F. Mm. You're a human being. Mm. You have so much worth. Your life counts for something. Mm -hmm. You are an important human being. Kenya would not be the same without you. Africa would not be the same without you. Mm -hmm. You're important to your friends, to your parents, to your community, mm -hmm. to your, I wouldn't say your tribe, but even to your tribe, even mm -hmm. to your political party, yeah. even mm -hmm. to your small group, your mm -hmm. community group, mm -hmm. the people who you play football with. Life wouldn't be the same without you. Mm -hmm. And the clip we watched of the people who committed, si who attempted, attempted to commit yeah. suicide, mm -hmm. each of those people were important to someone. Mm -hmm. And you know the pain, a lot of people know the pain of losing someone to suicide. Mm -hmm. You feel that gap, you feel that space that they've left. Mm -hmm. You are important. Mm -hmm. You're not your grade. People, people don't pass exams and they still live. Yeah. Others pass exams and they don't leave. Mm -hmm. We can't measure the worth of a human being mm -hmm. based on your salary. You're not your mm -hmm. salary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not your degree. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not your the car you drive. Mm -hmm. You're not the title on the desk of your office. Mm -hmm. You're beyond you're a human being beyond these materialistic things, things that yeah, we people measure define people by. by. Yeah. And, and I like the fact that you're bringing that up because now in this day and age mm. where social media and everybody is on social media and the things that you see on social yeah. media yes. and then you start asking yourself, Me the you know, my shangu, because people true. seem to thrive. And that of course can bring a lot of stress and pressure yes. to live that life, yeah. you know, and, and to be that person if if not if actually not, one line to yes to, one to, line to, before to, 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 to summarize what she has said yeah stop competing mm -hmm. comparing yourself with other people okay look right. at yourself sarah very I quickly think defining yourself is very important and that's mm -hmm. why she's saying you're not your grades you're not your salary yeah you're, you're not your grade i mean you're not your title yeah. you're not your job title so i i think uh self that comes to the conversation on self-identity and awareness mm -hmm. who are you because first of all you need to know your worth because when you don't know who you are also 
you don't know what you deserve mm -hmm. and you live below your privileges and it's very easy now for you to endure always the, the enduring pain mm -hmm. always be going through pain and think oh, well this is it's life normal. this is yeah, yeah and take it as normal when you okay. don't know who you are and even uh, there's a story in the bible that we all know of the prodigal mm -hmm. son yeah. and the bible records very well that when, uh, when um he came back to his senses it means he remembered where he came from. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, wait a minute, I'm a son of a rich father. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be feeding with a, with a pig mm -hmm. out here. He, it, was a, it, it was him coming to a sense of identity. This is who I am. I should mm -hmm. not be suffering like this. Mm -hmm. So once you know who you are also, I mean, people will call you names, will define you, call you that, say, oh, you, yeah. you're like your grandmother. You cannot get anything in class. Mm -hmm. Look at the grades you're bringing. Mm -hmm. You know, no one even in your family. You want to be a doctor? No one even in your fa family has ever been a doctor. You, you may, you've got to be able to accept yourself, know who you are, know okay. you are loved, like she's saying. Mm -hmm. You are loved. You are wonderful. You are, and the world will never be the same. If, oh, if you're absolutely. never there, you know, so absolutely. you need to know the kind absolutely. of word that you bring to the world so that any, even any other things that's happening, a, any negative thought coming to they you, you, you can really be able to, you. yeah, okay. you can handle it. Um, we have a caller oh, on please. the line, Francis from Embakasi. Good morning. Good morning. Are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm on the line. All right. Thank you very much for calling us. Can you hear me? Welcome, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so do you have a question? Do you have a comment? Do you want to contribute to the discussion? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. To Dr. Psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. I'm happy I'm listening mm -hmm. to your discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I kindly ask, uh, as a psychiatrist, how do you uh, help government mm -hmm. to control uh, those... Uh, government civil servant or MPs, those who go to high jobs for well, a suffering mental disorder mm -hmm. because it is true they are there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember I was listening to Dr. Jenga mm -hmm. for his interview mm -hmm. and uh, he was saying in Kenya now we have uh, uh, 10 out of uh, 4 out of 10 mm -hmm. are suffering mental disorder. Yeah. So in the parliament, mm -hmm. there must be those people who are suffering mental disorder and they are not known. Mm -hmm. So that at least the government can take action to, to be doing vetting. Mm -hmm. Even the president himself to be vetted before he enter into the presidential candidate so that we can reduce a lot of problems in our country. How mm -hmm. do you do about it? All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time and, of course, your question. Do you want to take that? Yes. Okay. Um, one, it is it will be wrong for us to discriminate anyone going through a mental disorder. Yep. So when we talk of vetting, mm. uh, I don't know whether it means you vet so that you can not this person be Your elected. Uh, that's not fair. And even according to World Health Organization rights mm. about health, mm. you cannot discriminate someone because of mental disorder. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you are, can the government can support people mm. who are having that, and those even I position can come out. We really appreciate um, um, this women rep for it's a lady who has the, mm -hmm. one of the political leaders yes. who has come out yes. to talk about our journey on bipolar. And this is something that we really appreciate yeah. that they, they, what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe in terms of government, mm -hmm. what that we can only ask is number one, to implement the, to take consideration and to work on improving the budget. Mm -hmm. Because as we talk, it's unfortunate that zero, only zero point. 0.01% mm. of a national budget goes to mental health mm. as facilities or matters. Mm. This is very, so poor funding. Mm. Number two is also the, the aspect of now insurance companies incorporating mm. um, counseling as part of uh, services that you can get so that people can use their cards yeah, to get to counseling. Yeah. And of course now as, as a government, and especially now we are in a political arena, uh, our, our politicians are talking of big, big things, but they are very little, or very few of them are talking about uh, uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. I would wish to challenge them. Mm -hmm. The other thing is what uh, Senator Kasanga mm -hmm. did the other day mm -hmm. in terms of the, the bill, mm -hmm. mental health bill. Mm -hmm. I would wish that once it's out, is implemented to totality. Okay. That would be a great thing. Yeah. Yes. Because again, sometimes accessibility, like you said, and affordability as far as, far as um, mental health, you know, is concerned. Sometimes it can get expensive. Yes. You know, especially yes. to access therapy and all mm. those things. So, mm. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. So we have to give music, but before we listen, uh, we don't to have music. Mm. So Jefferson, mm -hmm. high school again. <laughs> all right. So and then got to a point where you attempted suicide. 
uh, right? Was this after, in high school? Was it after high school? After high school, mm -hmm. uh, my dad passed. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's when he told me I want to teach you how to be a man. Mm -hmm. But that, he was that is bed sick, and mm -hmm. he, he was now at a point of death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, at the same moment, he will tell me, mm -hmm. I will beat you. Oh. <laughs> like, I wonder how you're going to get the, the strength to, get to wake up and head. beat me and you're mm. almost dying. And I was like, a lot and yeah. finished. Yeah. Mm. So I'm like, you want to teach me how to be a man? Okay. How to dress? Okay. Mm. Those are fine. Mm. But how, how late or how early mm. is it? Mm. You see? Mm. These are like 20 years have passed. Mm. You have lived with the, the trauma and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Then <laughs> you want to live all the other years that are coming. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you want to live a meaningful life. Mm -hmm. So it, it was like I'm starting from zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it reached even in class six, I was still playing with the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, head te that the head teacher could come and ask me, why are you still playing with these kids? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but it was the yeah, yeah. Cause it was the mental. Stage. Physically, you don't want to play with them, but mentally, you, you want to play with them. Like yeah, <laughs> because you missed it, yeah. and you are like you didn't really explore everything mm -hmm. about playing and everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, after high school, I was uh, very resistant. Mm -hmm. I was with my mom now, so mm -hmm. uh, being with my mom, that's when we are now starting to form a relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Do you get to understand why she was away from you? And, no, and she was kept away from me because my dad yeah. wanted to wanted me to grow as a strong man. And your siblings? Because mm -hmm. you said you also have siblings, right? You're not the yeah. only child. So yeah. were they staying I with your dad? I was the dad? last born. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Were yeah. they staying with your mom or your dad? Huh? Your siblings? Huh. Were they staying with your dad or no, with your mom? No, they were with my dad, but they went... Ah, uh, okay. Uh, right. They... They yeah, they left. Okay. getting right. married and whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I was the last, mm -hmm. the last born. So, so yeah. after my dad passed, I was mm -hmm. with my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, I even lost my sister when I was, mm -hmm. I was uh, in high school still. Sorry. Wow. So yeah. after high school, then I lost my dad. Mm -hmm. So everything became heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm now resisting. Mm -hmm. I'm now like. My mom could talk to me, then we have like an argument, mm -hmm. the anger now, you like, I can't beat my mom, yes, because I love her, <laughs> you know, sure. you can't beat your mom, but mm -hmm. that's anger, you know, mm -hmm. she also was like, uh, she was in a bit of that relationship mm -hmm. of uh, like the, the words that were used, mm -hmm. you know, even in the abuse, they were still like, Mm. Uh, you're weak, you're mm. lazy, mm -hmm. things like that, you know, mm. the negative words, so I could live with them, mm. manifest them, because, you know, physically I was not that strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, you're like, okay, it's a game, maybe you're playing, yeah. or you're like she's trying to make fun of it, but so wait, me, so I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, so the things yeah. that, let's say, your dad mm -hmm. used to say to you mm -hmm. are the same same things your mom used to say to you as well? Like but calling not, you lazy, not too calling much. Calling you this, calling you that. Okay. Yeah. So then at what point, very quickly, because we have like a minute to go on a break. Okay. At what point did you get to that point of, you know what, this is too much, um, I can as well just end this? Uh, when I was in university, mm. but uh, before I went to university, I was, mm. I was in Nini vocational school mm. i was very resistant sometimes I, I would break things mm. that's when depression manifested itself mm. because uh i used to call them the bad moods mm. <laughs> mm. so i go home i break a plate mm. and i'm like i'm fine mm. <laughs> everything is fine mm. yeah i break a plate i, I knock the wall and mm. do various stupid things but mm. I feel okay. I call them the bad moods. Okay. So then uh, I used to wake up in the morning, go to school, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, I was afraid of nothing because now, like, I just wanted to, like, uh, any, I'm, I'm used to the pain. Mm -hmm. So, like, in Kitoka Kwanyumba, say, five, 
mm. niende kwa shughuli hakuna kenye itanifanyikia mm. I'm, i'm not afraid of a thief i'm not afraid of anything like mm. now you want the pain to come but the pain doesn't come okay. so uh, after three months after depression mm. then i go back to mania mm. <laughs> mm. i wake up the same early in the morning mm. earphones in my ears mm. listening to loud music mm. then i reached i i, I reached the vocational school then i'm like sweeping around mm. doing a lot of cleaning mm. i go back home help my mom you know mm. i'm in a happy mood yeah it so goes, it goes like more of yeah it goes know, like that for like three months yeah and uh, i used to buy a lot of earphones <laughs> yeah that's called like uh, overspending yes because of uh, the bipolar mm. so like i'm spending Hundred shillings. The next time I, I spent to fifty, I, I don't mm. know where I get them, but yeah. they just come. I couldn't do without earphones. Okay. The moment I I don't have an earphones, mm. I'm home. Mm. I sleep. Okay. And it could take like two weeks. Now I'm depressed because like yeah, yeah. like the manic phase. So at some point you really happy, yeah. good moods, mm. all those things, mm. and mm. then. At some point you're sad, d- yeah. don't want to do anything, don't come to me, don't talk and to me extreme. and all those things. And of course, yes, yeah. they're in in both in both extremes. Yeah. We want to understand how bad it can get. Um, you know, and of course Isaac again and, and and Sarah will help us to to so that we really get to understand when we talk about depression and how severe it can get. We have a better understanding. But for now, let's take a break. But we have to give music. Do you want to introduce your music very quickly <laughs> as we as you take us on a break? Yeah. All right, there are several, right? Okay. So, one of the one of the ways I was able to cope and deal with my pain was through music. Yeah. Uh just like he's talked about. Mm. And that's what I was going to say. You 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 have talents, you have skills, you have things that you're good at that can help you in your recovery. Mm. Same, yeah. So, this is music I wrote between the ages of 9 and 19 mm. and I released in 2017. Oh, wow. Enjoy. Oh. You didn't tell me which okay. Oh, you must cry. You didn't tell me which. I've been overthinking. I've been chasing visions in my mind. I've been facing heartbreak. Fighting battles you can see. inside oh
All right, welcome back. Now, Jefferson is actually okay. Go ahead. How you feel? This is something real fighting sigma in the society, bipolar and anxiety, depression and addiction, killing people, not a fiction. Yeah, uh, we gotta work up for this. Spread the love with the kids. So if you feel you're a champion, shine your light, let it glow to the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That yeah. is really good. Is that the music that we have? Yeah. Good. Okay. We'll be playing it uh, before we end the show. Um, or do we have it now? Okay. Well, all right. We'll play it before we end the show. Um, but hey, time is far as spent. Still so much to cover. So Isaac, I'll just go quickly to in terms of how bad then can, can it get um, in terms of moving from mild, um, moderate to severe case of depression, right? Could you paint a picture for us very quickly in terms of what it looks like and how bad can depression get? All right. Uh, whenever somebody has stress or whatever makes them to say that they are depressed, when mm. they come, we take them through an assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, this assessment is a 21 questions assessment with ratings. So mm -hmm. you answer this question in different ratings, then you mm -hmm. give a score. Mm -hmm. Maybe, for example, 10, we say this is mild mood disturbance, your mood is low. Okay. Or maybe 10 to 16, this is mm -hmm. clinical depression. Mm -hmm. Or this is 20, 16 to 24, this is moderate depression. Mm -hmm. Or this is 25 or 26 to, to 40, this is severe. Mm. This is 40 to 60, this is extreme. Mm, wow. So out of that scoring, yeah, you can yeah. be able to detect where this person is in terms of depression. All right. Now, once you have been able to determine that, mm. then the kind of treatment mm. is determined by the score. Mm. Somebody who is just having moderate mm. to clinical down there, mm. at least psychotherapy is enough. Okay. Unless somebody is having issues to do with the insomnia, mm. loss of appetite, you can now refer to a, a doctor to give him or her to boost something for the, for the, for the appetite mm. and for sleep. Okay. But for within a period of maybe seven days, I, mm. I don't recommend for a longer time okay. because of the longer term effects of this medication. Right. But for somebody who is se severe and extreme, mm. we need a psychiatrist mm -hmm. to review and also administer several treatment. Okay. But this has to be hand in hand mm. because the medication works with the brain, mm. the physical aspect. Mm. But psychotherapy helps to, to deal with the behavior, what yeah. is then happening in the environment, mm. the real cause of this problem that is mm. now affecting the brain. Okay. So that collaboration is very important. It's very important. So, so simply put, case, yeah. depression is treatable mm. through counseling mm -hmm. and some and antidepressants. as well. Mm. Now, um, hey, antidepressants. There's some people who say antidepressants are the worst yeah. mm. because... <laughs> Not really. Right? It's a and, question and of... And the two of them are like, yeah. Yes. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been there, I don't want to oh, go yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, so remember we said depression is sometimes caused by an imbalance in, in your brain. In your brain, yeah. yes. So the chemicals are, mm. are kind yeah, of upside all over down the place. Mm. So the work of antidepressants is to stabilize mm. the mm. chemical mm. reactions in your brain. Yes. Yes. That has side effects. It yes. would be unfair mm. to say just take antidepressants, it no, will no, 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 no. It has side effects. Get One, understand. research has shown that when you combine psychotherapy with the with antidepressants and mm. medication, mm. Uh, clients and patients have a better outcome. Mm. If you do psychotherapy by itself, that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, if you do antidepressants by itself, you don't deal with the core of mm. the issue, the cause, mm. but it helps you, You have your mood stabilizes. Okay. But there are side effects. Yes. Mm. And I want to share with you one of <laughs> okay. my side effects. All right. I used to feel so hungry. Uh, I got such a huge uh, appetite. So yes. I would eat so much, uh, but because the medicine was not dealing with the underlying cause, yeah. mm. I was Still hungry, feel. fat, and sad. Mm. Mm. Ay, 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 and a point ay, reached ay, where I was ay, just ay. like, this is not really working for me. Yeah. Mm. And also when you take medication, mm. it takes time for the psychiatrist to figure out 
what com combination works yeah. for you. Mm. Yes. Because there are people who have depression mm. and insomnia. Mm. There are people who have uh, depression and hypersomnia. There are mm. people who have depression and no appetite. So yes. the, the doctor is trying to find a combination of drugs mm. that will return you to a normal state to fix the brain chemicals in your the mm. brain chemicals, but to also fix now these other symptoms that you have. Mm. It takes time, it requires a lot of patience, okay. a lot of determination, All right. but you have to understand these are chemicals you're putting in your body, things will change. Absolutely, mm. yeah. absolutely. Okay, for you, yeah. did you experience any like... Actually, I could talk about that. Yeah. Uh, I could add on the antidepressants. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, those are the, uh, the meds that made me want to <laughs> end it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the the antidepressants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, I was gi I was diagnosed with bipolar, mm -hmm. bipolar one. Yes. Mm -hmm. On my first attempt, my first attempt was when I was manic. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, uh, I was gambling. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> gambling and and the and the and the addiction. You mm -hmm. know, it goes with bipolar. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. I lost a game, mm -hmm. <laughs> one game, then. I cracked my phone over the wall, mm -hmm. and I, fe I was in the room alone mm -hmm. in the hostel. So I was like, I can't talk to anyone now. Like, <laughs> it's, it's really hard on me. Mm -hmm. I didn't sleep. So the next day I was taken for, uh, actually, I spoke up. Mm -hmm. I told a girl, like, I, I have these feelings of down, being down. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm worthless. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I belong in this world. Mm -hmm. And you know, the words always come like, I feel like dying. You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah, those words like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like I belong. Mm -hmm. you know, but I wanted to belong, you know. Mm -hmm. That time I'm in university. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, after being taken for uh, therapy, mm -hmm. actually I went alone. Mm -hmm. Then I came back and told this girl, I mm -hmm. can't go alone. Because mm. <laughs> <You came back. laughs> yes. So I went back. Mm. So after being brought, I can a psychologist, a counselor. So he taught me how to. She taught me how to forgive. Mm. To forgive mm -hmm. myself, to forgive yes. my past. Actually, it was hard. I can remember, and when I came it was what you have forgiven your father for what he has done. Mm -hmm. in, 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 it was not his fault and yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, with the time, I've learned to take it that. Yani uh, yaiku kwa makosa yake ni vile walikuwa melelewa hivyo. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I understood that. Mm -hmm. Then I can remember your your story is too strong mm -hmm. to be solved with that. With uh, one nini. session, just therapy. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you that the health unit here, mm. KU, mm. that's when I was given meds. Mm -hmm. So, these meds in Kapewa, they like was a good depression, mm -hmm. adi mania. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, in 72 hours, I only slept for 10 hours, mm -hmm. and on the first day, uh, <laughs> it was really like I'm working. I I start talking from rapid speech. Yes, I start talking from six. PM, Gioni, Sazirilin, Mimeza Dawa, Mbaka Fiverr, Subui, Yonda Kwana Wongea, and I'm speaking alone. Mm. <laughs> I, okay. I, I'm alone in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So I wake up at 7, mm. take the meds, mm. take a pill, then mm. I go to class mm. and I walk. Mm. I used to walk because mm. I love walking, it's yeah. therapeutic for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I walk to class and fro, mm. to school and fro, mm. like. Yeah, it was really like a very hyper journey. Yes. Yeah. Everything is grandiose. And that's the thing. Yeah, you that's feel the thing so. Then how do you deal that's with that? the thing yeah. with medication. You don't get it uh, right on the first. On the first it yes. takes it takes a couple of months and weeks mm -hmm. for you and your doctor to figure out is this really working? Is yeah. this really helping? So okay. his so, his medication mm -hmm. was from what I'm hearing, has uh, moved bipolar, him from yeah. the depressive <laughs> part exactly, to, to the bipolar. manic part. Yes. You see, he has he had bipolar at that time. Yeah. Yes. And so that's a different set of variables exactly. for someone like me who just had depression. For someone cool. else whose depression is manifesting in different ways, mm -hmm. it takes um, time. Before it takes a lot of time to... before you get the right combination that works with the right mm -hmm. side effects that you can 
afford Handle. to live with. Yes. Yeah. Some of these medications actually make you suicidal. Yeah. Yeah. Yet yeah, actually, and those are the symptoms you came with. That's a point yeah. that we, 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 when we say there's a lot of need for monitoring yeah. and support. Yeah. Because if you don't have that, especially just when you're coming out from the depressive mm. mood, mm. you are very low, you're very low, then you get energy. Yeah. That's now the time many people now attempt suicide. Mm. So the need for that balance, and that's why I said psychotherapy and counseling is very critical. Sorry, psychotherapy and psycho uh, the medication, the pharmacological approach is very important. very important. And now the support system of Completely. your parents or whoever is around to monitor what exactly is happening. Mm. Yes. I think, okay. yes. I think it's very mm -hmm. important that, um, and I'm glad that he asked for help. There are people mm. now, before we even come to the counselor, eh? yeah, yeah. there are ways that me as a person who, I mean, I'm not a psychologist or whoever, anyone, my, my superman comes like, but for anyone, mm -hmm. we can be able to tell through behavior that mm -hmm. this person actually needs help, you yeah. know. Like, there's a young man I've been seeing in my hood, mm -hmm. you know, and for a number of years, I think from 2019, it was just, I just meet with him drunk. Mm -hmm. It's a very young, handsome man, actually. Mm -hmm. is You just meet with him drunk, you mm -hmm. know, that's it. But he's sober, but he's drunk. When he's sober, he's very good. Mm -hmm. But now, um, just met him, been meeting with him about two or three weeks ago, now the person has been coll collecting papers, you know. Mm -hmm. You see, I saw him that time, and sometimes it would get really bad. He's insulting people, uh, you know, sleeping in the ditches. Mm -hmm. You know, I just watched and say, oh, someone will take care of that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because I say, ah, this person never used to be like this, but mm -hmm. I think it's getting bad. I mean, I just looked and said, oh, someone will help, you know, help him or, yeah. Someone else passed there and said, ah, someone will also do what? Mm -hmm. We'll help him. Mm -hmm. So now he's collecting papers, uh, you're walking around naked, and then we look and say, maybe someone will take care of that or someone mm -hmm. will help. I think we all have a responsibility in the exactly. society to, help. to be able to see, okay, this is an escalation. I think this person needs help. What can I be able to do? You say, mm -hmm. let's be our brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. Let's be kind. I think that's what we said. Let's be kind mm -hmm. and let's try and, and, and help each other, you know, really. Because um, all of us, you know, <laughs> all of us at some point, you be stressed, you'll be stressed, you'll be Absolutely. distressed. I think it's just fair to be just kind to people. To and for okay. me, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there, I'm a life coach. Well, I'm also a counselor. He's a, psych, um, a psychologist. Mm -hmm. These are different ways or these are different uh, processes or things that can help you be able to deal with some of these things. Mm -hmm. Life coaching, mentor, mentorship, and uh, some of these trainings, mm -hmm. they are very preventative. Mm. When yes. we are coming to Isaac, when you are coming to, to a psychologist, that's mm. curative. We are trying mm. to, you know, trying to salvage things because they are broken apart. Mm. So I think that uh, whatever point you are in life, let me tell you, even if you think you're doing very well, mm. get people who check on you, mm. people who can ask you hard questions, mm. people who, you know, they have your best interest at heart. Mm. If you can, I'm, I'm sure maybe you can, you can get one or two people yes. who really care about you and you. open up. It can mm. be a life coach, it can be a mentor, mm. but because by the time we are getting there, things are bad. Mm. And they're bad, and now we are speaking about depression, we're going to yeah. suicide, and yes. Yeah, so we yeah. Can Let's try also and look for that. preventative ways. Yes. And let me also say this, you know, because I know we don't have much time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a call. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's take a call. Okay, so, Elizabeth okay. from Nakuru, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for calling us today. Do you have a question, a comment? Um, I, have, I have a, a problem. I've been. Okay. okay. I don't know how to explain it. Mm. In, when when I was in in high school, I tried to commit suicide in form three, mm. but I I don't understand why. Cause the problem I think the problem started when at home, because my my parents were were like comparing like. Mm. Comparing me with other children. Okay. So I didn't understand that because I was young. I loved Kuka Kiasi. I didn't feel like I I, I belong there. Mm. So I decided to shift. Mm. I shifted to another town to work mm. after Form Four. Mm -hmm. I worked there. I didn't I didn't even co communicate. I stayed there when they called me. I used to talk, but I didn't want them to know where I was staying. Mm -hmm. After a while, I, I I got a man who showed me love, and then I I gave I we were like not yet married, but I get I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. After a while, in 2016, we separated. Okay. 
and then i was pregnant nika akakuwa sini haras in some ways in fact i don't know if i can i can tell mm. after that when i gave birth my child had so many problems he stayed in hospital i didn't know if i had depression so after that it was discovered that i had depression okay as a kutoka for see nilikaanza kukua like sipendi mtoto like yani i don't want to see the child after a while nika nika nini nika nika pewa madawa nika shift i was that time i was married kwa na yeye bado but nika shift nikaenda nyumbani kuishi na my parents so i didn't feel like they wanted me to be there Because of the other scenario all right i yeah. still struggling with the same am i you, you sought for help okay so how are you doing now do you have a question uh-huh i think for one month nikawata alafu me i thought imeisha but the kind of ikuisha mtoto after 3 months akaanza kukua na like seizures like right now as we are talking me i have i have a lot of pain na ina kujirudia like i don't know how i can say it but okay. do it is like i can say you right. are like need depression in okay. which way did you all right so sarah maybe you want to handle that because she's like i i just i can't explain right or i, I, I tend to feel yes. uh, one she be, before she got married mm. she had a problem mm. now she got into a relationship that was abusive someone who showed her yes. love yeah just to make, make mm. kind of abuse her mm. in a technical way mm. now from there she gets a child she gets uh, ppd postpartum mm, depression, depression yes. so it's a mild, multitude of issues mm. you hear her say that at some point she went and took some medication she stopped mm. all that i would wish to tell elizabeth mm. and other people who could be having the same challenge mm. is please go back and see a therapist mm. who will take a deep history of what exactly is happening mm. make a diagnosis mm. and start treatment mm. Otherwise this will continue to worsen every now and then. And the brain is a very sensitive organ mm. and the most vital organ because it will affect everything. Mm -hmm. Remember there's also something very important that I picked as she talked about mm -hmm. that the psychological the psycho the psychological issue, the stresses that are going on in a mother mm. when she's pregnant are transferred to this child. child so yeah. if this child is not if this mother is not helped during that time mm. and the child is grown up chances of now being predisposed that what we are talking about uh, mm -hmm. the issue of the, what we call the hereditary factor mm -hmm. so this child will also have the same problem okay so the need for her and any other person who could be going the same to seek help seek help all yes. right you know at so the same yeah for elizabeth mm -hmm. um first of all please go to a doctor a, a psychiatrist a doctor who will help yeah. you with the medication mm -hmm. they'll be able to give you the correct medication mm -hmm. that will help you be able to take care of the child the feeling you're feeling of not uh, liking the child not wanting to look at the child that's called postpartum, postpartum depression, depression yeah. it's depression mm -hmm. that comes after you've after given you birth mm -hmm. you had depression before mm -hmm. when you were being compared with the other children that's why you, we can say that's where the suicide came from mm -hmm. it's a, so for some people you don't see it coming yeah. it's not something you're aware of mm -hmm. so once you once you go to the doctor they'll be able to give you the medication but also ask to see a therapist mm -hmm. who will now give you the atakuelezea how to, to be able to that. raise the child mm -hmm. how to deal with the issues how mm -hmm. to live back home because now you've had to go back home yeah and that comes with its own issues mm -hmm. but first of all thank you so much for calling and sharing yes and reaching out mm -hmm. and asking for help mm -hmm. that's that's the first step to being yeah. healed that's yes. the first step to getting treatment mm. because now at least you, you're able to hear professionals say this is the name of the disease yeah. it really helps when a professional can tell you that's called depression mm -hmm. or that's called bipolar mm. or that's called schizophrenia because mm. it means what you're feeling is actually 
real. It's yeah. actually yes. legitimate. Mm -hmm. And so don't feel like you're the only one experiencing it. Mm -hmm. That millions of women experience postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And if you've seen in between me and um, my fellow mm -hmm. people on the panel, yeah. we're from different economic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Mental illness doesn't care. It does Just not like choose. a homa yes. does not care. Mneshi runda, ama mneshi wapi. A homa is a homa, is a homa. And that's the same thing with mental illness. It's yeah. just a disease. Mm -hmm. um, and it's treatable, mm. you will get help, there's help available for you. There are okay. government hospitals with doctors and medication to treat you. Okay. I really wanted to go back to one more thing. All right, very quickly, because we need to be actually ending the show now. When I was saying you're not your grade, you're not your salary, you're not the, your skin tone, all of those things, yeah. what are you then? You're a creative human being. Mm. You're an important human being. Mm. You have amazing ideas in your mind. Mm. You have a voice. You. There are people who are creative, they can build things. There are people who look at mathematics and it makes sense. Mm. Many of us are not like that, mm. but there are some. There are people who are talented in languages. Mm. There are people who like to read. There are all of these creative things about you. There are all of these unique things about you mm -hmm. that show you that you're important and you need to be here. Okay. The video that you guys played, mm was made on my phone. There are things that you have in your environment that, that will you help you, use. that you can use mm. to heal. So okay. don't be discouraged. Don't feel like all hope is lost. It's not lost. It's not lost. You're yeah. still here. You're watching this. You're alive. You're breathing. Mm. That's what's there's, important. There's hope. Your life there's is hope. worth it. OK, yeah. I like that. So I'll take that as a parting shot. Yeah. So <laughs> Jefferson, Sarah, and Isaac, I'll give you like 30 seconds, 45 seconds each, okay. uh, you know, to just summarize this because we really need to end the show right now. So Jefferson, mm -hmm. I'll start with you. As far as, again, a person, you've gone through this, you know, mm -hmm. gone through depression, bipolar, anxiety, like you've dealt with, you know, so much of the same. What would you tell someone who's just watching us now and thinking, I just don't know how to move on, very briefly? Okay, everyone that is watching, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in yeah. and uh, I would like to encourage you all to speak up uh, and if you have other people who are feeling the same, mm. who have the same mental health problems but they don't know, mm. ask them to speak up because we need the youth alive mm. to keep our economy growing because mm. if you don't have the youths and most of them are dying by suicidal men, mm. then we lose more men mm. and we love no one to 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 need the babies, I mean, <laughs> yeah, reproduction. I, I see <laughs> yeah, that. I need, see that. Okay. We need the men. So speak up, stand up, speak up, mm. and get help. I like that. And yeah. you also said you saved four lives. Yeah, I uh, saved four lives from by, uh, death by suicide. And so that's really blessing. really good. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Sarah. As far as then someone who's watching us now and thinking, so how do I start? to just you know, make that step of seeking help. Because like we said, there's a lot of stigma and fear and all those things. Mm. So someone watching us thinking, hey, where do I start? Very yes. I, I think, I think but even, uh, I mean, for this uh, the being here and really sharing their stories, mm. it goes to show that uh, it's something common that is happening. You are not alone. You are not the first one. In anything that you're going through, you're not the first one to go through it. Mm. And uh, you'll always find help out there. Mm. So I think when we know that, then it becomes easy for us to be able to share. And now that we know that we can see a psychologist, we can see a counselor, ask mm -hmm. in your networks, you know of a counselor, you know of a psychologist, mm -hmm. I'm sure you can reach out as well. I'm a counselor as well, he's a psychologist. Mm -hmm. You reach out, always mm -hmm. reach out and ask for help. I think uh, you'll be able to get the kind of help that you need. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's first of all recognizing that, uh, you know, this is not just me. I mean, there are so many other people who have been here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if people, they, are, they can even speak out, then I can just go and share. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing that, uh, um, when we know that, then we, are, we can be able to get the kind of help that we need. That we need. And then okay. the other thing I want to say, that those of us who just get into this kind of depressive situations because of our lifestyles as I finish, mm -hmm. please sleep well. Okay. Sleep well. Any, every hour you sleep before midnight gives you double relaxation. Mm -hmm. You're watching movies, you're, you're uh, eating badly. These are the other things. So eat well, eat yes. healthy, eat well. Please, sleep you're taking well. caffeine so that you can watch movies all night, so yeah. that you stay up, so that you're eating uh, jabba or whatever it is that <laughs> you say. These things end you in depression. Okay. okay. And then the other thing, oh, please Sarah, exercise. No. <laughs> oh, exercise. <laughs> yeah, I'll exercise. take it at that. Yes. Okay. So eat well, sleep well, and, and just exercise. exercise. Okay. Yes. Isaac, 20 seconds for you. We exist mm -hmm. because of you. Mm -hmm. 
We are available. Seek help. Look for me wherever you are, social media platforms, and even on through their channel. Okay. Seek for help. We'll help you. All right. And on that note, we have to end the show. Do we have Jefferson's music as we end the show? All right. So, of course, special thanks to my panel. Special thanks to you for actually watching. And like everyone else has said, if you feel some type of way, and you're like, huh, I can't, I can't handle this on my own. Please reach out. All right, you can reach out to us. We'll forward, you know, your details to them, and they'll be able to help. But again, thank you for watching, and we hope that you've learned a lot from today's episode that is on depression. Please let's keep this conversation going on social media everywhere else so that we help so many people. My name is Winnie Lubamba. See you tomorrow for another topic. But for now, enjoy Jefferson's music. <laughs> But you wanna leave behind But you face them all alone Cause you feel you're on your own Pretending you're okay But really not okay I know you are afraid of how People will think about you So shine on you Less this craziness They believe it's laziness But I don't feel the same They think it's a game I've been there on the ground Duck is all I found But then I came back I put it in the track I'm not here for the fame But you gotta know my name